As you can see here, we have our ribbon and this is what we are going to be making today and this is the ribbon that you can tie onto your headphones and today I decided to use this pink yarn and usually when you're choosing yarn, it usually gives you all of the information that you need to know it has the brand name and if you move it down a bit, it also tells you the size of the yarn and what kind of hook that you need to be able to crochet with this yarn it also tells you the yards and how much it weighs but I know normally don't really look at that, I kind of just intuitively decide what yarn I want to use based on like the color and the feel of it. So for this yarn, the size is a medium, also a 4. It recommends using a 5mm hook and today I am going to be using this hook here. This hook has two different sides, it is double-ended. This side there is a 4mm end and on this side there is a 6mm end. Generally having a hook size that is a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller doesn't affect the project too much. So for example, this recommends a 5mm hook. Having a 4mm hook doesn't really affect it too much. So today I'm just going to be using this side, the 4mm end. Moving all this stuff aside, you're going to take your ball of yarn and make sure that you have just enough so that you don't have to pull on your ball of yarn too much. The first thing we are going to do is make a slip knot. In order to do a slip knot, you need to make a loop like this. To make things easier for yourself, you can also turn the loop one more time. And the next thing you're going to do is take that loop, put your fingers through, just like this. You're going to grab the end of this tail and pull. And then this is going to create your slip knot. If that is confusing, don't worry, I will show you how to do it one more time. In order to create a slip knot, all you have to do is create a loop like this and turn it again for extra measure. Put your fingers through like this and then grab, grab this part and pull. And there you have your slip knot you can grab your hook and put it through and with the shorter end of the tail you can just pull it until it is snug on your hook now we can begin our project so in terms of how you can hold your hook and hold the yarn i like to hold my hook like this because i feel like this is just easier for me and it's the most comfortable but there are also many other ways you can hold a hook like i know some people hold it like this but for me holding it this way isn't that comfortable and i feel like i don't have enough control and for my other hand i like to wrap the yarn around my pinky like this and then i also wrap it around my index finger like this so now that we have the foundation, we can finally start making the ribbon. So what we're going to be doing is creating a foundation chain. So to make your first chain, you are going to wrap your hook around the yarn so that it is around the hook like so. And you're going to make sure that your hook is facing downwards, just like this. And I kind of just like pinch the bottom here so it doesn't move with my other fingers. And then I pull the yarn through the loop that is already on the hook. And now you have your first chain. And as you keep chaining, this part is going to be longer, so it'll be easier to hold. So to demonstrate one more time, you're going to wrap your hook under and face the hook downwards. And in crochet terminology, this is called yarning over. So you are going to yarn over, face your hook downwards, and pull through, make sure that you're pinching this little tail here, pull through, and now you have your second chain. So you're going to keep doing this until you have 110 chains. We will meet back here and I'll tell you what to do next.
Okay, now I finally have 110 chains and it is going to be pretty long. You can always go back and add less or add more depending on your preference. So now we are going to work our next row and we are going to be going back all the way to the end from where we started. Now you are going to, once again, chain one more, yarn over, pull through, and you are going to skip this chain right here and you're going to insert your hook into this stitch right there. So as you can see here, it kind of looks like your hook has two loops. You're going to yarn over, pull your yarn through one loop only. And now it's going to look like your hook has two loops. And what you're going to do is yarn over and pull through both of these loops. So what you just did here is called a single crochet. You're going to keep doing this until you reach the end and make sure once again you are pinching this little part so that it's easier for you to pull through and yarn over. And as you are doing your single crochets, make sure that you don't accidentally put your hook through the same stitch that you just did. This is the same stitch and make sure it's the next one. And the way you can tell is you can see that this loop is like in this hole right here. So this is not the one that you want to put your hook through, it's this one right here. So you're just going to keep doing that over and over again until you reach the very end. As you keep doing that, you will notice that this part right here, it's starting to form a little ribbon. By the way, on the chance that you make a mistake and you want to go back and redo something, all you have to do is take the hook out and just pull on the yarn. And as you can see there, it just kind of undid the single crochet that I did. So all you have to do is put your hook back in. As you pull, you can kind of tell like which side it should be on. The moving part of the yarn is on this side and it's facing towards me and you're just gonna pull it back so it's snug and then you can continue on. I just wanna make sure that when you guys are making your single crochets, make sure that the chain itself isn't turning like this because that's not going to give you the same look that you want. As you're doing your single crochets, make sure that there's two ridges on both sides and they kind of look like Vs as you're doing your single crochets. Make sure that it's not turning in any other direction and that you're keeping it straight. Okay, now that I have finally reached the end and I just put in my last single crochet, that is pretty much the end of the pattern. Just to make sure that it's secure, I'm just going to chain one. So I'm just going to yarn over and pull through. This is where I'm going to cut off my yarn. So this is where you can get your scissors and snip the yarn. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab your hook and pull. And usually people weave in the ends all the way back so that it's seamless, but because we have two ends here, what I'm going to do is just tie it. I'm just going to tie a knot because I feel like that's a lot easier and it's quicker and I hate dealing with ends. Technically, this is the unprofessional way to do it, but this is just the easier way to do it. Um, don't tell anyone I told you this, alright? Just um, one day when you're a pro at crocheting and you're working on your own projects, you're gonna be looking back at this video and you're gonna be thanking me, okay? Just remember that. Anyway, I like to tie a double knot just for extra measure to make sure that it doesn't come undone. Sometimes I even tie a triple knot just because I'm paranoid and I don't want it to fall apart. And usually it never does fall apart, which is why this method is superior. After you tie that, you can snip these little ends off as well but make sure you're not snipping it too close because you don't want to cut off the knot that you just made and don't worry these little end pieces are not that noticeable so yeah now you have your ribbon so for me i'm going to add them to my headphones that i always wear i already have like another one right here so i'm just gonna tie that so yeah this is how you make your own little bows mm -hmm. 